Imposter syndrome. What does that mean to you? Generally speaking, when I ask this question, the whole room lights up. <laughs> so, because <laughs> very rarely do I meet any creative person who has a level of self-awareness that they don't suffer some form of imposter syndrome. But imposter syndrome is this, is that I fear that people will, after some time, discover I know nothing, I provide no value, and I'm talentless. Meryl Streep said that. She's like, one day I fear that people are going to just get really bored of me and realize I have no talent. Meryl Streep, the most nominated actress of all time. Most creative people are creative because they're very in touch with their emotions and they're very vulnerable, especially actors and actresses. And that's where their power comes from. So they suffer from imposter syndrome. That vulnerability that you tap into as part of your creativity is what leads you to this path of the dark side, the whole imposter syndrome. And I think the imposter syndrome has this lifelong fear of being discovered that you're not as good as you, that other people give you credit for. So here's the thing. If we allow ourselves to look at ourselves through the lens of our ego, we're going to say, like, we should be at this level. Like, I am from, you know, I am a senior. I should be at this level. And, I, and we, we tell ourselves a story that we're supposed to be somewhere other than where we are. And it starts to push the two images of ourselves apart. The true self and this created self, right? And I've talked about this before. Almost everybody in this room already sees your true self. Like, I don't have to tell you guys, like, I'm a five-foot Asian guy, because I am. I don't have to tell you that I don't have any hair, because I don't. But in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm six foot two. I'm very, like, debonair. No, I just don't think that of myself. So grounding yourself in your true authentic self and embracing the learner mindset of saying, I don't know things. I'm just here to learn. And maybe the work I do is good or not good. I don't really care. I'm only interested in growth. So what's happening, Marshall Rosenthal or something like that, Marshall, he wrote this book called Nonviolent Communication. There's an excellent three hour workshop lecture. I swear to you, you must watch this lecture from beginning to end. I can't believe it's free kind of thing. He's passed away, but he talks about nonviolent communication that it's very difficult for us as human beings to look at something objectively as an observer. We always have to throw our opinion in there. We always have to judge. We always have to measure and assign value, right? So what, what I mean by that, this is my work. That's a pretty objective statement. This work is complete or incomplete. Now there's a little bit of measurement in there, but it's not horrible. This is my really good complete work. Well, now we've gone on the other side and we're using violent language because we're imposing our opinion on this work and it reflects on us. If we can just say this is my work and it's a timestamp as to where I'm at today in my life and my learning, how could that be an imposter thing that you have to fight with? It's the other person who walks in the room and says, I should be better than I am. This should be really good. And when it's not, the two sides of you are in conflict and you become this disassociated self and it becomes very complicated. Not only are you busy trying to maintain an image of yourself that doesn't exist to try to impress people, to tell yourself the story that you're better than you are, that's a lot of your energy. That's a lot of your mental space and your creative energy being consumed by this. So I personally think one of my, my personal biggest breakthroughs in public speaking was just to say to myself, I'm here for the other person. I'm not here to prove to me or to you that I'm an incredible speaker. I'm the smartest person. I've got the best slides or the coolest transitions. Once I let go of that projected image of who I thought I wanted to be, it became a lot easier for me to get on stage and look at hundreds of people and not feel like I want to cry and run off stage. Because those are very much the true feelings. It, it's a shift in mindset to say, you know what? If I focus the lens on myself, everything I look at magnifies from my skin, the pores on my nose or, or the freckle I have or whatever it is. But if I invert that lens and I just am neutrally observing myself in this community, in this audience, then it becomes a lot easier for me to deal with. So if you come from a place where you're really grounded, like from the earth, grounded, and you don't have a high opinion of yourself and you readily admit to people, like Tyler said, I don't know, I'm here to learn. Obviously, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to learn. I'm going to keep myself grounded in that way to allow my true self to just to be present and not to worry about this other imagined version of myself that nobody sees anyways. For a lot, long part of my life, I have suffered from imposter syndrome, so I know this emotion very well. 
and I've developed some mental tricks to get over it. And I'm, I'm trying to share those ideas with you, okay? I also know this, is that we all have some kind of core skill. They're not always related to what we're studying right now. Like some of you guys can be amazing bakers or skateboarding people or, or gymnasts or whatever it is. But in the design world, you suck. Let's just admit it, you suck and you're terrible. And when you're exposed into like new spaces, you feel very vulnerable. And I get pulled into those waters myself. Uh, there are times when I've gone to certain party uh, and uh, functions and I just felt like I'm like, look at all these people. They've done all these things. Well, who the hell invited me? Somebody made a mistake. Somebody sent me back home right now. And it's because I had this skill over here and then they brought me over here and threw me out like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm drowning here. But over time, as I get older, I start to learn like, you know what? Remember who you are. Remember that it's just not you in the lens of what you're doing today, but all of you, you bring all of that. And you have to learn to find that core and remember when that imposter syndrome is yelling inside your head, that voice to say, you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you don't belong here, you don't deserve this opportunity. Go back to that core, have that conversation with yourself because you bring a lot to the conversation. Yeah, it's just this constant oscillation between your taste and your skill and they overlap. Right? So in the beginning, you're in a freshman and you're going to school, your taste might be higher than your skill, most likely. And then you start like getting this foundational work and you start to learn about typography and lettering and composition. A lot of a sudden your skill surpasses your taste. And then you start to get exposed to the next tier or two or three above where you're at. And you're like, oh, I suck again. And it's this constant movement through that. I would like to just get rid of that other part because it could be emotionally draining. It could make you go into states of depression, anxiety, and, and it'll, it'll just shut you down because those, those negative emotions will kind of kill your creativity. I'd like to just look at it like I'm on this roller coaster called life, and sometimes I, I have more skill than less, but no matter what, if I look back to where I started, it's way more than that. So use that as a reference point. Now, people often compare themselves, and comparison is the thief of joy, they compare themselves to a future imagined self or to other people who are far superior to them. Notice this, very few people will say like, yeah, I, I'd like to be like Gary Ch Vaynerchuk when he was year one. And you watch those videos like, oh, that's terrible. Or Marquez Brownlee, and you're like, ooh, that kid was rough. They only compare themselves to the best version, most up-to-date version of people. And they forget that everybody sucked at one point. Everybody was a beginner at one point. So first of all, let's just get rid of that comparison thing. And if you have to compare, compare yourself today to the person you were just a few years ago or two months ago. That's your marker. Okay, like if you could swim from shore to a mile marker, that's fantastic. And then when you can swim to the second mile marker, that's e even more amazing. And just look how far you've come from shore. Don't look at it from where you'd like to go. When you compare, look backwards, not forwards, because that could be debilitating. I don't want that for you, okay? Hey everyone, Ricky here. I'm one of the content directors here at The Future. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a comment down below with a timestamp, letting me know which was the best part. There are gonna be some other videos that are gonna pop up right here that you also might enjoy. And if you can do what everyone asks you to do, which is to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It honestly does go a long way in our mission here to teach 1 billion people how to make a living doing what they love. Head to thefuture.com to learn more. Thanks for watching and your continued support, and we will see you guys in the next video.